You know those moments when you record an entire video and you realize you're on the wrong screen? I just recorded an entire 45 minutes of video and I was on the wrong screen. Press F to pay respects. Anyways, so I'm even more tired than I was at the beginning of that video, but I really want to get this done and over with um, just so I can submit this assignment um, and I can play with the Circuit Python and Arduino tomorrow slash today. I mean, it's already 8.40 a.m., mind you, when I had to sleep um, because I'm nocturnal. But uh, anyways, I'm going to try and re-explain this. Um, if my little vector doesn't stop snoring. Vector, shut up. He's snoring. But, um, I am super exhausted and I am probably going to be fairly incoherent, but I think that I can explain. The big question is, am I going to do the same screw-up that I did before where I accidentally open window the Chrome and I don't close Chrome? So, what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to close out of the, all of Chrome so that I can close out of the, everything when I open the tab so that it doesn't automatically do that. So, let me see, this is automatically open it and then close it. Yeah. Okay, so essentially I am going to skim through my code. There is a lot of it and I'm going to explain it to you part by part. Um, I'm not going to explain to you what classes are or anything like that. I'm just going to, I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of the code. Um, and uh, I'll explain to you what my code is doing rather than how to use these particular things except in one or two cases where I'm using something that isn't like super commonly used um, so first I'm going to show you the thing so here's this and then when you open it you can click and you can navigate the menu. It doesn't always uh, respond to the clicks, it's weird. So this one actually has a bug where if you click it, you accidentally pull up a Wikipedia page of this. Um, and um, you're supposed to pull up the Wikipedia page when you click on these hurricanes. So you have clicked on Ophelia and um, Ophelia pulls up. Um, so the same thing um, with these ones, you can click on these hurricanes and you can uh, get the, uh, the, um, these details, uh, more details of the actual hurricane. This one is actually a static graph because I was too frustrated with the mouse click events to really make this an interactive one. So this is just the damages in billions of dollars relative to each other. So you can see that in the recent years, um, the most uh, impactful ones were Matthew, Irma, Maria, Michael, and Harvey. Um, so that's just defining them. Uh, relative to each other rather than having actual numbers. Um, then uh, this actually would have been a decent one to use in a pie chart, um, but there's too many hurricanes here for me to do in a pie chart. Accumulated cyclone energy, which um, is essentially a measure of how strong a hurricane was, how intense a hurricane or a storm was over this course of its lifespan. So even though Harvey was a, a more devastating hurricane than Irma was, um, Harvey didn't even reach Category 5 
let alone last nearly as long as Irma did. And Irma was just a behemoth of a storm that uh, lasted for days and days and days and days and days. And that's why um, that storm's um, ace is really high. Um, but uh, here you can also click on these bar graphs and uh, you can get a different set of data. So you can get these these things like so Jose you can get a like a whole um, information about that. Um, not the Wikipedia page because there's not a Wikipedia page for the smaller hurricanes like if you take for instance um, Arlene um, Arlene only has a 13 page report as opposed to Irma which has a a hundred and eleven page report like it uh so it has a hundred and eleven page report. Um and uh so you can click on all of these to do that. Um so my code my code. I'm defining some global variables so that it's easier for me to true false whether or not you're on a certain menu option, a certain menu option, so if you're on like the bar graph or the scatter plot, this basically says that you're on that area, and then draw this graph there. Um, so this part is actually just initializing the tables and the array list, and it does that three times. Um, the table will be taking a CSV, which isn't that used that often, but um, in like processing I don't think. But in data visualization, it's used a lot, especially in machine learning data visualization, it's used a lot. Um, so here I'm just, of course, defining the size once, and then I'm loading the table and defining the array list. And I'm plotting this once, which if you actually look really closely, you can see them, all three of them sort of flashing for one frame each. Um, and that's because, um, that's because the uh, the thing needs to be initialized, and I don't know why. Um, it needs this needs to be in the thing before I actually pull up the graph itself. Um, so uh, this is done three times for each uh, of the three things, except for the pie chart, because of obvious reasons. Um, and then um, here is like. It's asking if that's true, and if it's if it's true, then the menu is true, then draw these things. If the line graph is true, then do do the line graph stuff, um, and put the back button there as well. Same thing with all of these things. And the pie chart has the back button. <sighs> Excuse me. So. The mouse click is the most important part because it allows us to navigate, obviously. So if you're on the menu, and if uh, you click, this is basically is a function that defines the um, that defines the bounds, and it sees if you're inside that if you're inside the button because processing does not have a button thing. Maybe processing four will, but processing three does not have a button thing. I think. PJ5, P5JS has a thing, but not processing. Maybe, pro I don't even think P5JS has one either, actually. And vector is beeping again. Um, so this just draws the aesthetic of it, and then this actually handles it. So this part of the code is actually done by the teacher. I just modified it very slightly, I think, when I when I copied and pasted it um, to um, for each of the buttons so this is for each of the buttons it uh, does it and it just shifts it over so that it's in that range so it does it four times um, and um, this one just defines the back button I really could have done this all in one thing but I didn't do it because I just wanted to make them separate because it's clearer. Um, this one basically just draws the background, 
just a bunch of clouds. So this one just let the foreground clouds and uses a napping thing to sort of make it look like that. That they're moving with the wind with your mouse. And this part just draws the ran like four random lines, but the frame rate is so fast it looks as if there are so many like lines of uh, rain. Um, it's raining sideways. That's what I'm going for because it's hard games. Um, so anyways, back to this part. If you click on that, then it sets the global menu to false and it sets the the menu option itself to true and then it goes to the draw command and that now that's true. Uh, so now that's true, so then it uh, executes that command. Um, so uh, that does it for all of them. And then if it, this one handles the mouse events for the line graph and this basically calls the array up the array things and if you're within a certain distance of the point you can click it and it pulls up the the data from the the csv and that basically does that a couple of times except for this one where if you do it it pulls the it pulls it from the um it pulls the data from the uh the thing but it uses the different sort of algorithm to try and not an algorithm different sort of uh, process to determine whether you're in the in the bounds and this is the logic for the back button which is used several times through the um, thing so the bar graph uh, first to find a class for that so like the class is, is like a template where you Put stuff in and you put the parameters in and you create a different thing but it's like a cookie cutter but then you change the parameters to make the thing different every time and it just makes it easier to organize things and easier to create things every time you do it so I have the uh, for the bar graph I made this part actually draws the bar I don't even know why I have him set up. He's so noisy. <sighs> so, this part actually makes the bar, and then the, this one is using the thing. I accidentally mapped it wrong, so this is just negative, so that it maps in the opposite direction. Um. And um, so that the graph is popping up. Um, this part is just basically saying, oh, hey, you're within that graph. You're within that rectangle. Let me display uh, what hurricane this is, what storm this is. And I'll display its exact ace because it has four decimal points after the zero. So I need to display all of them because they're not otherwise exact. You can't really tell especially for the smaller ones. So this one draws the details of the window and grid. So this just draws the grid and stuff. This one just handles all of the labels. So this one just, you're drawing the labels and everything. Uh, this one is just rotating this by a certain amount so that this is on its side. This one actually processes the data and it's what's called in the thing so that it can have the data in the table. So this one, um, we first got the CSVs like called in the, um, in setup. So we basically loading the table in there and then from here we're saying, oh, get this from the CSV itself. It's in a certain pattern. Um, it has this, this, um, array in, um, index um, label and then get the thing that's associated with that header and um, get the thing that's headed with this header and put them in this string in this float um, this float in the string and um, store them for this particular thing and for this row and then you shove it inside the uh, shove it inside this constructor and then add it to the array. So now you have this object that's 
that's got these parameters and then this shifts it over so then this just makes the things and these are in these certain orders so that they don't draw on top of each other so one does draw on top of each other the line graph um the line graph again you have the the class and everything and you're making this part actually just makes the line my brother suggested putting the ellipse in there so that it looks a little easier to find where the points are <sighs> uh, excuse me this point this part actually handles the mouse over event so that if you're from this part this one actually does require a little bit of ex explanation it just uses the distance formula so you put in the two points x1 and y1 and x2 and y2 and it'll calculate the distance between them and if that's within a certain and this all will always result in an absolute value so this will always be positive so if it's if it's less than a certain this distance from the thing um then um then you uh you're over that point so if you're over that point oh, excuse me if you're over that point um add this text to it hover it over so this part actually handles the data for the line graph so it uh it handles the data for it in the same way as before this the maps it again it does the mapping thing shoves it in there draws it to the screen actually draws it to the screen um, this one just labels the graph and makes it look nice and you know labels it so this is drawing the grid and everything this is just adding the labels more labels I to explain the menu, the pie graph. Um, I used a, an array for this one because it was easier to just use an array in this particular case than a CSV. So a pie chart, I just used, took this data from the processing database, processing um, der, um, documentation, and then I changed it up a bit so I could use it. Um, so um, this just um, basically takes the thing and then uses an arc function to sort of say, okay, here, put it at these, this location, center it with this location, with this diameter, when if you're going to say, of the circle, um, this is, the, I guess, the major and minor diameter of it. Um, and the, the angle, the, and it just says, okay, this is the angle you want to do it at, and I guess this is the the this is the angle one you wanted at and this is the angle two you wanted at so that it draws it in a certain direction so that if you if you recursively define the angle then it just rotates it around it so that defines the pie chart and then here I'm just converting from rectangular to, from polar to rectangular so that I can put the text there because the text takes a rectangular coordinates not polar coordinates so that just basically plots them at the start of each graph <sighs> so that it's easier to see and the scatter one is very similar to the line graph um, in concept but I made it a little bit more complex so that I define the class and this one is actually defining the categories and but not um, this one took the longest time to do so you're defining I mean, based on the categories what color it should be um, and then you're drawing the lips and then you're putting the hurricane name over it so Irma and Maria actually kind of overlap and if you click on them you'll actually if you click them in the right way you're going to get both of the white keys up um, but yeah so this part handles the mouse over thing so that you can get a lot more data out of it so that it displays all the little things and it uses the same distance function as I mentioned before and it's important to note that and I unmapped the pressure so that you can get the actual value of the pressure within the thing. Technically I could have brought in the pressure itself as a thing like I did for the um 
for the, uh, I think it was the bar graph where the maps over, it showed the actual ace value to the map ace value. Um, I could have had that itself, but I used on map. I just unmapped it here. And I, um, basically had that listed there, and, um, so it just, just lists all of the details of that within the little, little, um, thing. So I don't think I showed you that, actually. So, uh, if you actually look closely, it has a lot of details about the hurricane itself. It says what category it was, even though it's obvious. It says in, like, three different places. Um, so, you can, and it's, um, given some little info there, and things like that. Um, I hope that showed up. I am not recording this a third time. Um, so, uh, then it just all gives all of the information. And this one just handles the actual data processing as before, so it gets all of the information from the CSV and shoves them into the thing and process them. This one plots into the screen. This one, it's actually a pretty long thing that defines the thing because as you can see it's a very complex style compared to the other ones. So this one actually has a, a distant, like a decently long style. So this one's like, okay, it's just defining the categories and this one's defining more category texts and stuff for the, for the the horizontal lines, and then this one's defining the the labels for on the the right hand side of the thing. Um, this one's defining the thing, the grid itself. Um, this one's another just another part of the labels. Um, that's a lot more going on. Um, so here it's just defining the logarithmic. Um, things that are there. Um, I'm pretty sure it's log base, uh, I wish we learn more class. Um, I'm pretty sure it's log base 10, it might be log base 2, but the important thing is that it's a logarithm. Um, and, uh, so you're just defining all of the rest of the labels. And that's basically that, so... Here it is again, just so that you can see it again. I basically cut the time that I explained this in half because I'm so not ready for this. You can see that uh, I just basically copied and pasted the code for that particular thing. And if you put your thing just right, you can line those up. But then you can have this so that it looks different, depending on where you have it, the way the mapping is. But yeah, so you can click on everything and have them pull up everything. And these things are actually fairly interesting. Um, and so, yeah, that's basically my project yeah